Hello everybody, my name is Kara, and today I am here with my double TBRs for the Autumn Readathon and for Witchathon. So both of these readathons are hosted in the last couple of weeks of October, and I am so excited, I'm ready to read all the cozy things, all the like slightly spooky atmospheric things, like I'm just really looking forward to both of these. Now as you will see, I have a truly absurd number of books <laughs> on my TBRs, but I'm kind of doing something different where I'm just putting together like a giant pile of books that would fit the challenges and that I'm interested in reading and like not even trying to narrow it down because I'm really trying to make more of an effort to mood read because that's something I really enjoy doing that I haven't been doing as much recently. Now if that means I end up reading like three or four books for one challenge and none for another, like I'm just gonna let that happen. I don't think that is gonna happen but like I just want to pick up what I want to read at the second that I want to read it. So I'll start with my Autumn Readathon TBR since that one is occurring first and it runs from Saturday October 20th through Friday October 26th and the creator and host of this readathon is Mercy from Mercy Mercy's Bookish Musings. I will link her announcement video down below. The first challenge is to read a gothic or spooky book. And for that one I have picked a classic and that is The Tenet of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte. This is a classic I have never read and I actually hadn't even heard of it before a few years ago. I really was not familiar with Anne Bronte's work. I have read Wuthering Heights, I have DNF'd Jane Eyre, so I'm really interested to see how I like this one. The second challenge is to read a nonfiction book that feels autumnal and Mercy has kind of suggested like nature writing or cold location travel writing or like a memoir. That's kind of what she considers to be like cold weather nonfiction but she also said that like this can mean whatever you want it to and I'm doing kind of a weird thing that makes sense to me but probably doesn't make sense to anybody else so let me explain it. So the one that I'm counting is Women of Camelot and this is Queens and Enchantresses at the Court of King Arthur by Mary Hoffman illustrated by Christina Bollett. So I know this is not nonfiction but for some reason in my head and kind of when I'm picking books and reading books and kind of categorizing what I read for some reason I think of like the original tales of something I think of that as closer to nonfiction than to fiction. So like if I read a fairy tale retelling, that's obviously fiction. But for some reason, if I read like the original Beauty and the Beast or the original Little Mermaid, like Hans Christian Andersen tale or something, that feels like I'm reading nonfiction almost. Like, like that's one of the things I consider when I'm like, oh, I feel like picking up a nonfiction book. I think of like original folklore and stories. I don't know if that makes any sense. I'm trying to talk myself out of it because I know it's not correct. But anyway, I'm just going to go with it. <laughs> and I'm really excited to get to this one. The illustrations in this are simply stunning and I actually saw um, Anne Thorault, I don't think that's how you say it in French, I'm sorry, but I saw her talking about this book on Twitter and I immediately looked it up and bought it because it just looks so cool. It looks right up my alley. The third prompt is to read a novel set in a cold location. So I have a couple here and the first one is The Dollmaker of Krakow by R.M. Romero. I actually won this in a giveaway from the author so thank you so much and I am so excited to read this. This looks like a very like wintry kind of feeling book and even though on the back it talks about how two girls become friends over the summer. I'm pretty sure that this is going to be more of a winter book. I'm getting kind of like Nutcracker vibes and I also know that it's going to be really intense and emotional because it also takes place during the Nazi occupation of Krakow and I think this is going to be a really important book and just a really like beautiful and atmospheric way to tell such an important story. So my other option is another one I'm really excited for and that is The Sisters of the Winter Wood by Rena Rossner. This is a book inspired by Jewish folklore and I'm really looking forward to it. I'm really looking forward to the sister relationship in this and I don't know too much about what it's about. I just know that I think one of the sisters goes missing maybe and then I think the other sister has to go into the woods to rescue her and they discover like family secrets and I'm just really really excited about this one too. The fourth prompt is to read a historical fiction novel and that's one of my favorite genres so again I have a couple options here and the first one is The Secret Life of Violet Grant by Beatrice Williams. I really don't know very much about this um, companion trilogy. I've seen it get really good reviews on Goodreads and I just, I don't know, I was in the mood for like an adult historical fiction kind of romance book and I think that's what this is going to be so depending on what kind of historical fiction I'm in the mood for I might pick this up. And then the other one is The Outcast by Kathleen Kent. Now this one actually, I think this one actually gets pretty bad reviews overall but I'm really expecting to like it. It's kind of a western historical fiction and the female character is kind of a tough as nails girl and the male lead is like this pure hearted like strong sense of justice kind of guy and when that dynamic is well done I really like that. I really like when the girl is kind of the more vicious one and the guy is allowed to be like more I don't know, good-hearted or, or with like the stronger morals or something. I think when that's well done, I really, really enjoy that. So I'm looking forward to this one, even if people seem not to like it too much. There are also a couple of bonus prompts, and number five is to read a short story collection. So I have tentatively picked one out, but this is one of the prompts where I'm not sure I'm going to get to it because 
I don't have a great track record with short story collections or anthologies or anything like that, but if I am in the mood for it, I will be picking up The Starlet Wood, which is New Fairy Tales, edited by Dominic Parisian and Naba Wolf. This is a really beautiful book, for one thing, and it has a bunch of different fantasy authors, some of whom I'm familiar with and I really love, like Catherine M. Valente and Naomi Novik, and I, I could really enjoy this, but again, it's something where I really need to be in exactly the right mood. The other bonus prompt is number six, read an adult novel about a young female protagonist. I don't actually have a book picked for that. I might pick up something like that, but anyway, so those are all the books I have picked out for the autumn readathon. Now moving into my witchathon TBR. This readathon runs from October 24th through October 31st, and the creator and host is Rhiannon from Crescent Moon Reads, and of course I will link her announcement video down below as well. The first prompt is, this time of year is all about preparing for the dark and gathering enough harvest for winter. Read a book that is bound to make you warm and happy. And I have several options for that. The first one is Spindle's End by Robin McKinley. Robin McKinley is rapidly becoming one of my favorite authors of fairy tale retellings, and her writing just makes me feel really cozy. And I believe this is a Sleeping Beauty retelling, and I'm just really excited to read this one. I think this is one of the ones that people often mention as being like one of her best, so I'm really excited to get to that. Another option is The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Mary Ann Schaefer and Annie Barrows. I first heard about this book from Laura's channel, from Paperback Laura, and I also recently saw Leah from Leah Hide and Seek talking about it on Twitter and how good it was, and I just feel like this is going to be a really lovely kind of warm, but also... but I've also heard that this book is like not as like sweet and saccharine as the title kind of implies, and it's about a journalist who is doing research I think on World War II, and then she finds out about this like society that was on an island and kind of how they used it as a front for like for fighting the Nazis, I think. And my last option for this one, although I have plenty more that I could talk about, is Dragon Spear by Jessica Day George. This is the third and final book in the Dragon Slippers trilogy, and I have loved the first two books so much, and they're just the perfect balance of like sweetness and charm, but also I don't know, they get kind of dark sometimes, and I think the plot and the characters and the writing is all wonderful. The female friendships in these books are just fantastic, and I love the way that the dragons are characterized. Like, they truly feel like their own characters, and I'm just really looking forward to this third book. The second challenge is light the candle for your ancestors and read by candlelight. This is a time for honoring our kin. So I don't have a specific book chosen for that one, but I think that is such a cool prompt. Number three, someone is more widely known as Halloween. Read a spooky horror slash thriller novel. Now here's the thing, I don't do horror, and I really tend not to enjoy thrillers, but I have chosen a mystery novel, and that is From the Charred Remains by Susanna Calkins, and this is set right after the Great Fire of London in, I think, 1666? Yes. And I believe it's about a lady's maid who gets wrapped up in a murder investigation, and we'll see what happens. My other option for that is The Dream Thieves by Maggie Stiefvater. This is the second book in the Raven Cycle series. I read the first book more than... is it more than two years ago? I don't remember, but I loved it, and for some reason I just never continued on with the series, and I feel like this is the perfect kind of fall and like winter atmospheric, like just a little bit spooky and creepy kind of read. The next prompt is, the veil between worlds is thinnest. Read a book that has paranormal elements. And my first option for that is Dreaming Death by J. Kathleen Cheney, and from what I remember this book is about two main characters, one, both of whom have kind of like supernatural or paranormal abilities, and one of them is about a woman who is a sensitive, I think, so she can, I think, sense people's emotions or feelings. The downside to that is that the constant exposure to that has actually made her blind. And then the other character is a man who dreams of the deaths of other people, and I think this book is about how they come together and they have to kind of both use their talents in order to... is it solve a, solve a murder? Yes, to solve a string of murders, I think. My other option for this is Ghost Talkers by Mary Robinette Kowal. So this is an alternate history, alternate like fantasy kind of book where the spirit core is a part of the, I think, World War II? Uh, allied powers, and that's all I really know about it. I think the female character starts um, sensing things about the death of a British soldier, and she has to try and solve what happened to him, I think? Something like that? Really excited about this one, but again, don't know much about it. The next prompt is, in honor of your ancestors, read a book that features your ethnic heritage. And as I mentioned before, I am half Italian, so I will be reading The Story of a New Name by Elena Ferrante, translated by Anne Goldstein, I think. And this is the second book in the Neapolitan novel series. I recently read the first one for Women in Translation, and I just fell in love with it. I really just flew through that book. It was so engaging, and I'm just... I'm so invested in these characters and in their lives, and their complicated and messy relationships, so I'm really looking forward to getting to this one. The next prompt is, Every witch needs their coven. Buddy read a book. And I will be buddy reading Disenchanted, The Trials of Cinderella by Megan Morrison with the lovely Giselle from Giselle Bradley. We have buddy read things before, and I'm really excited to get to this book. I recently read Grounded, which was the first companion book, 
book and I loved it. I just, that book blew my mind with how much I enjoyed it and with how complex it was. So I'm really looking forward to this one. I believe it's like a Cinderella retelling that focuses on taking down like unsafe work practices. Like she's, um, I think she like starts a workers revolution or something and Cinderella is also black, which is so nice to see. So I'm really looking forward to that one. And finally, the last prompt is to read the group book, The Girl Who Drank the Moon. And I do have that one. I actually put this on my second round of five star TBR predictions. By the way, this is by Kelly Barnhill. And so obviously I think I'm going to love it. And just for some reason, I have not picked it up. And then it turns out that this was their group book. So this is the perfect opportunity to finally read it. This just sounds like the most beautiful and whimsical and wonderful story and I actually own two other books by Kelly Barnhill and I just have this feeling that she's going to be a favorite author for me so I'm really hoping I enjoy this one and I'm really excited to get to it. Okay everybody so that is my ridiculous number of books that I have tentatively pulled for the two readathons I'm participating in in the second half of October. I'm really excited for any or all of these that I pick up. I probably will also pick up some that are not on this TBR because that's what we do. <laughs> Please comment down below and let me know if you guys are participating in either of these readathons, what you're planning on reading, or what you thought of any of these books if you have read them. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will see you soon with another video, and I hope you love the next book you read. Bye!